this video we're going to put the Xtool P2 through the um, mapping and engraving surfaces and I decided to try using stones because my granddaughter likes to go up to the beach when she's here and we pick up stones and there you can see I had to put a um, little board there for my keyboard and another monitor right up over the X tool. It makes it real easy to um, work with. I can't see the other monitor way over there. So when you're you're actually mapping them you go it's fairly easy. X tool creative space you just go in and you correct the select the curved surfaces and then you go into the measurement deal and then you just have to jog the laser there's a little red dot on it i'll show you in a second you have to jog that to the two corners of the area that you want to engrave now i wish it would have different shapes but basically you can get squares or rectangles at this point um, it'd be nice if you had the option to go with rounds and stuff like that but pretty much what you have to do is just um jog jog back and forth and you'll see the red dot and once you locate those two corners, it actually will map that surface in between them. So, okay, I put my two corners down, and let's go over here and look at this. So there, I'm, I'm kind of jogging it in place, and it's kind of hard to see the little red dot on there. But you want to get that in the um, upper left-hand corner first, and then you take and you add that as a point. And then you go over and you go down to the um, lower right corner there. And once you get it where you want, you add that as a point. And pretty much that's it. And you can see this is a really uneven surface here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into this window here on the Xtool Creative Space. And we can set the um, density of the points we want to probe and that all depends on how um radical the change is i think so i pretty much you know set it at a at a point there in the middle and then you let the machine go back and actually do the measuring and as it measures it fills those dots up with a little green dot there you can see so you can watch progress and then you wind up with a image of the curve that you just mapped out to engrave on uh, once you go back to your artwork there, you just get a little white box. You don't see it on the camera anymore. And you have to locate your artwork in that box. It has to be fully contained by it. And, again, and here we are looking at, um, you know, mapping out the surface. And it just steps by whatever increments you've stated there. And maps it out. And then, you know, once you get your artwork located, you just hit the send to the X tool, hit the button on the P2, and it starts engraving. Now I'm just guessing at these first settings here. So they're not, not actually perfect, I'll show you in a second. But um, it really was a very simple thing to get it uh, set up and running. And there you've got your monitor that tells you, you know, how much is done. You never know how much is left though. And actually on the screen you can see the exact time it's been processing. And there it is, it's doing a beautiful job. Now these rocks, the smaller ones that I picked up at the beach, were washed off. And they had a just a thin coat of lacquer put on them, which I like to do on stones before I engrave them. And again, you can see the uh, Z going up and down as it travels across that surface to keep the focus distance. So, you know, it did work perfect. Um, there it is, done. And I... Uh, really wasn't fully happy with the um, what I got because my settings were a little bit off I figured and this was the first time I've tried this on rock so I flipped it over and I decided okay let's go try that again and there we go again on the back side of the rock this time I um, I gave it a little more power and a few less lines per centimeter and this is something you have to play with with each type of material or rock that you use. I found it's slightly different, so yeah, you're going to have to have test pieces or you know run tests on the back. But there it is. I'm creating my first fossil, and this one actually I'm happy with. Came out beautiful. 
Um, really nice job. This would be fun to hide in the yard or next time we go up to find stones, just hide and let her find it, see what she says. But, um, you know, there you can see, and there's a lighter one. I mean, that's not really bad, but it wasn't the results I was looking for. So, you know, just playing with the, um, the power and the lines per centimeter does give you some change. Now, I grabbed another rock, and I was going to put a little dinosaur on. I mapped it out, and this one actually gave me trouble. The um, Z went down, and they kept, for some reason, it was dropping off at the end near hitting the rock. So, actually, I had to stop it. And uh, there was a firmware upgrade done halfway through this video that I'll show you, and that seemed to have solved all the problems. So, this was the only area I encountered, and I think it was because the end of the rock dropped off you know more than uh, 45 degrees or whatever it is it started out good but you know it didn't work perfect so i went back and i decided to map it out on the back side again there's two sides to every rock and uh try it again and this time actually perfect no problems i stayed a little bit further away from the corner when placing my points so there you can see another perfect job another one of my mini fossils now i grabbed a rock from my wife's um flower pot she has some of these rocks that are real shiny and turns out they didn't really come out that good um this one here had some kind of a plastic coating on it it seemed like that kind of messed up everything so you know the blazer did a good job but i would recommend using your own fresh picked rocks and there you can see it's you know the plastic coating kind of change the results but they come out nice so I'm not gonna complain all right next I grabbed one of my wife's old flower pots and she's always asking if I can do things on flower pots and you know you could with the rotary but you know this here is really easy so I mapped that out section of it and then I took um, that flower that I like that sunflower that she likes to, to use uh, and I use for testing all the time put that on there and this time I started out with you can see the sunflower is in a grayscale state at this point it's not a black and white it's grayscale and the, the job is doing it just amazing you can see it's a, a little bit lighter but it's right on it's like a glazing on the surface of the clay pot and I was really very happy with that oh, can't see it there but there you can see it came out beautiful so um, I know what I'll be doing soon and then I went back and I tried it as a black and white you can see it's black now on the screen there and actually the little bit more power the black and white burned through that top uh, layer there and into the bottom a little bit I didn't like that as much but actually it did do a nice job so either way you can control your results just by you know playing with your settings a little bit and by playing with the, um, the the artwork also now here it is it did a firmware about halfway through this video firmware update and after that all my problems were gone so next I'm gonna try a uh, canning jar one without labels and I couldn't get the mapping to work through to clear for some reason it went right through to the bottom so I'm gonna put some masking on there this is masking I actually use for wood part sometimes when I laser if I want a real clean surface so you know by putting a little bit of paper on here it gives me some reflectivity to uh, map out and there you can see uh, you can see the red dot well you can't really see it too good in the, but you can see the red dot does a pretty good job at um, showing up on the white so there it is, it's all measured and ready to go and be, um, be engraved on. And that's what the surface looks like. And I came up with a little bit of artwork to put on there, just typed up a couple of things. And this is my first pass where I um, think I went with, uh, you, your maximum speed is going to be 30 millimeters a second so um you're limited when you're doing the surface mapping because the z is moving as you're traveling and this one here i kind of had the lines a little bit close together and stuff i didn't know what settings to use on glass 
and you will see that this first first try did not come out perfect at all I just wait like to wipe glass off with some thousand grit wet and dry paper before you know touching it because of the little shards so let's get the um, masking off and then clean up the spots and there you can see I didn't get a perfect job and if you look across across the top of the square drawer you'll see I actually got a crack in the glass I think it's because I had the um, lines too close together and the heat in there but you can see there's a fine crack that develops so so okay let's try this again and I did it on the back side and I spread the lines out further and gave it just a little bit more power to try to see what happened and actually I'm very happy with the the second side And, you know, this is just a, a standard mason jar. I've never done this type of glass before. So, you know, it's a fun learning experience. And let's peel that off and then clean it up a little bit. And there you can see I got perfect results that time. So this mapping will be really great for, you know, these oddball shaped jars and stuff that you really can't do on a rotary because they're not round. And this is the only laser that can do that. But actually you can see it's, you know, if only I could get good shots of it, but it is a perfect job that, you know, it did that time. So I'm very happy with it. And like I said, this is the only laser right now in this um, classification that can do items like this. Okay, so I decided if I'm going to, you know, make a money jar, I might as well just cut a quick uh, acrylic lid to put in there with a money slot. That took about 30 seconds, and there I am, my swear jar. I'll show you at the end, it was needed this week. Alright, so now let's just um, throw another rock in there. And you see, a very uneven surface, and really does a better job at mapping it out, it seems like. Another little dinosaur. Oop. Really does a better job at mapping it out since that firmware upgrade. So if you have one of these, make sure that you uh, let it do the upgrades every time you start the creative space and you see one available. All right, so here's a, um, a really odd shaped rock. Just going to make a fern fossil on that one. And again, um, you know, really neat. I think it's pretty cool the way that can, you know, just follow the rock. And then I just took one of the little sketches out of the X-Tool Creative Space and put that on a rock, a little dragonfly. And again, beautiful job. Um, this one I went a little deeper in. You can see, you can really see the internal colors of the rock then. And then I found a free um, monkey artwork online and I grabbed that just to try here. And that didn't quite come out perfect. That should have been a little bit bigger rock, I think, and it would have really been perfect. But you can see um, it did do a good job for the size it was, but a little bit overcrowded for the size. All right. Here comes a 50-pound rock for my garden. Um, we've, we've always wanted, you know, some kind of marker in our garden and stuff. And I grabbed a rock I found in the yard. Um, didn't really wash it off or anything so that may be a problem I'll show you but I took masking tape and just kind of tried to figure out a square spot on it that I was going to use to engrave on and I set it up then I pulled the tape off and went back and mapped it and you can see there's some sharp drop-offs and stuff I wanted to really see how this works on so this one did take a while to map I put an awful lot of spots on there you could see I just um, I wanted it to be close because there's so many imperfections and there it is when it's done it just came out a perfect map of it so whatever they did in that firmware upgrade really made this thing work perfect and then I'm going to um, just put this artwork on it and a little bit of text and my only trouble was I started this running about 10 o'clock at night didn't realize how long it was going to take um, with the with the limit of 30 millimeters a second you're kind of um, you know limited to how fast you can do something and it does each artwork I did the text and the flower all his different artwork so it wound up taking over two and a half hours but you can see there it's really um, okay two hours and what's that 38 minutes 
but I am really very happy with it. It just came out perfect. I mean, this is one hunk, hunk of rock here. And even followed all the contours and stuff. But you can see that sharp drop off. And it just did a perfect job. So I thought that was, um, you know, this thing just amazing. It does take some time, but it does amazing work. So I just wanted to, you know, make a video to show you some of the capabilities of this surface mapping. You know, not just wooden bowls. You can do basically anything that's laserable. And these flower pots are a big hit with my wife. I can't wait to do a whole bunch more. And I do like just using the, you know, cut into the glaze. And my granddaughter is going to have fun once we, um, you know, get these rocks hidden and just to find them and stuff. But every one of them just came out perfect. In the end, um, I did have a you know a little learning curve in the beginning, but now I'm starting to get down to settings, and that's the biggest thing. Uh, you know, when you start playing with this thing, don't be afraid. Make sure you have some samples to try, because you will find different materials. You know, just just different settings, and I'm just writing them down in a, in a book as I get them, and hopefully they'll work in the future again. But there's my garden rock going down in the garden today, and. Um, you know, it's just amazing, and like I said, I did spray a thin coat of lacquer on these rocks from the beach, and they came out beautiful with that. And there's my little monkey, and I'll show you at the end, my wife just made a wonderful gorilla. And that's just an artwork that's included with the uh, X-Tool creative space there. So, I'm, I'm playing with Mother Nature here now, just uh, creating my own fossils, it looks like. And even you can put names on things. That's my pet rock, Rocky. And, you know, there's that nice fern again. Just beautiful. So I just, you know, wanted to show you, you know, another use for these. Um, it's a fun use. You know, it does take time. But, you know, you can make some really unique gifts and presents using this. And I think the flower pots would be the biggest hit. With that one being the surface glazed one. And that one being a little more power cut into the pot. So does do a beautiful job and there's my swear jar and there's george and patty in the background my wife just made and i watched so much news this week i really needed this jar so anyhow um hopefully this, this helps you out if you're getting started with one of these machines and uh thanks for watching please subscribe